audio is sponsored by Skillshare. <coughs> I'm kind of sick, sorry. That's right, you read the title. You have a secret boyfriend or girlfriend you don't know about. You've just been neglecting them for this long. Like, you know that dream everyone has where you're in high school and you're about to graduate, but you forgot yeah. to go to a class all year? That's your secret boyfriend or girlfriend you forgot about. You've been missing them. Go, go to her. Go to her right now. Go to them. They were waiting for you. Like, obviously, it's not, that's not what we're really talking about. Okay, well, it's kind of, it's actually kind of... <laughs> What we're talking about is part of the story. All right, so I'm gonna explain it to you uh, uh, with a story. Okay, so not too long ago, I was having a conversation with my friend Andy, a dude I've known for a long time. We're chilling, and I see while I'm trying to explain something to him, he's like, got the laser focus, uh, not on me though, but on his phone. It was the focus where you gotta turn down the volume on what you're listening to so you can focus to send a message. It was that level of hyper focus. It was very. Very important to him. So naturally, I want to know who's so important that he's totally ignoring what I got to say. So I pull a little glance at his phone and I see, oh, he's texting Jolene. Yeah, you have no idea who that is. Let me, let me explain real quick. Now, Jolene is this girl he's been talking to our friend group about for like, like months. I know they hang, they kick it, and they might do like more adult things. I don't think I can talk about it. Like, we just know how much he likes her. So I call it like I see it. Oh, you're texting your girlfriend. And then there's a slight pause in the room. Like that awkward three seconds when you brought up a weird topic kind of stops and says, well, she's not my girlfriend. We're not committed like that. Uh, here we go. And see, this is where this whole dream missing class girlfriend for a whole semester thing comes into play. See, I hear the phrase, we aren't in a relationship a lot from people who are super lovey-dovey, uh, like my boy and old girl here. But little do people know, there's a quick litmus test to see if this really is the truth. I simply asked him a question. And the question I asked him changed everything. Like, I changed the whole trajectory of their relationship with like, like four words. And all he said in response was, nah, shit. she's my girlfriend. Aha! Let me backtrack a little bit. So this video is technically a part two to the video I made a couple weeks ago titled Why It's Okay to Date More Than One Person. Which is a far, far departure from what we're, we're talking about today. So in that video, I explained this. The very well-drawn uh, relationship flowchart. What this shows, outside of my very limited creative ability, is the typical path to a relationship people take starting from being alone, leading up to like the actual dating. And in that video, we established that it's okay to date more than one person because there isn't commitment in this phase. It's just the beginning. Just taking them out on a date. It's in the name. It's what dating is. Frosted Flakes are Frosted Flakes. They're not tricks. It's in the name. That's what it is. But okay, I will say outside of semantics though, it made sense that everyone got them confused. I mean, the, the states are pretty similar. What are the qualities of someone who's out on a date for like the first time? and someone who's like been in a relationship out on a date. They spend time together, uh, check. They like being around each other, uh, check. They talk a lot, yeah. Attracted to one another, I'd really hope so. What's the difference here, spot it. I don't know, where's Waldo? Sounds like you're in a relationship already. But the thing is that you're not because you're missing one key ingredient, commitment. And Andy thought that too. Everyone who's dating doesn't have commitment. Like you just cause you went on that date doesn't mean that we're done seeing other people. Like nah, just cause I take you to Popeyes one time, it doesn't mean like this is the exclusive thing. And you get commitment by like, like saying it, like communication, i.e. me sitting your cute ass down and saying, yo, I don't want you to see other people because that's gonna make me cry and I don't wanna see other people because no one else wants to talk to me. Let's just do us. And boom, that's commitment. You talked about it, communication, you, we, we good. You are now in a relationship, boom. The thing is that Andy never had that conversation with his girl, but despite that, he knew it was still his girlfriend because there was commitment there. See, you can actually get commitment in a second way a lot more like not a stable way but it's still there for example bear with me as i compare intimacy to a chair very briefly you go to school for the first day of class right and you see a seat in the corner of the room it's nice it's got it, it feels just right you sit there all day then the second day of class comes now that seat was gone sure you might be a little bummed but it's whatever just get a different seat but if it's open still you're more likely to go back to that same seat. And so you do that again and again and again. That becomes your seat without saying anything. The more time you spend with it, the more time you spend sitting in it, the more committed you become to it. Oh man, I'm good. And after about like three weeks of sitting in the same seat, if someone was sitting in your seat, 
you catching these hands? That's my seat. Dog. It's not like there were ever assigned seats. It's not like your name was written on it unless you did it like during class when you know you were bored. It's technically fine, but you'd still be hurt. But because you got familiar with that seat, is, is kind of yours now. Familiarity and liking that familiarity makes an unspoken commitment. And that tracks with dating too. Because when you go out with someone and spend more time with them, developing what you have over time, you also develop commitment, even without setting boundaries with communication. So you have commitment without even saying a word. And that's what happened to Andy. See, the question I asked Andy was this. <clears throat> okay, so if you made out with another girl, or insert another adult act, with Jolene, get mad and he paused for a minute and just goes actually i told you what he goes he goes odd fuck aka the kurt kurt was right noise see there was commitment with what they had the issue is that they didn't say anything about it see annie and his girl have been talking to each other for a while they've been lovey-dovey for a while going out kissing meeting each other's friends and developing a really really deep bond to the point where if he did do something with someone else even though they never said it wasn't all right it still would have came off a little shysty and that my friends means you're in a say it with me now relationship that means on the relationship flowchart andy was here which is in WA, AKA, what are we? AKA, wow, we probably should have talked about this sooner. And the more time you spend with somebody and the more you like them, the deeper you get into the spectrum and the sooner you need to ask why. But don't get it twisted, okay? That doesn't mean you are just in a relationship because technically communication rules everything. If you guys didn't say you're exclusive, you're not exclusive. You're just kind of a ah! hole. <laughs> we're going behind their back. So no matter what, that conversation is necessary. But you should be aware of how this whole thing works. And that's why I'm here. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you're in a relationship. And then know it. it. So was Andy. I bet y'all curious about what happened to Andy. So I think what I said to him stuck with him for a little bit. And I'm pretty sure he had a conversation with his girl. So I was happy, you know? I helped them realize where they were. You know, I did a good deed. I'm a real good Samaritan. A couple weeks after that, I asked him how they were doing. You know, waiting to see the fruits of my labor. And he said, oh, yeah, we broke up. <laughs> well, yo. Apparently they were on different pages with the relationship and didn't see anything long term, so decided let's just stop before things get worse. Which I guess is still an option. I guess. <laughs> there we go. Something to scratch off my bucket list. A uh, ruined relationship. Haha. <laughs> you know, I don't I need to do more help with myself though, honestly. But I have. You know, it's 2020, so we're trying new stuff. And although I've already failed my resolutions, uh it doesn't mean I'm not still trying. Specifically with Skillshare. So I talk about Skillshare a lot on this channel, uh, mostly because it is amazing. I've had a lot of stuff on my mind recently, and it's been nice to push that all aside and fill it in with learning. Uh, dog feeling anxious? I uh, can't feel anxious when you're learning Premiere Pro 2020. <laughs> That's how anxiety works, but it helps though, seriously. Honestly though, I've like leveled up as a human thanks to Skillshare, like legitimately, like my, my, my skill stat has been raised up at least five. Cause you can pick classes that'll actually help you and learn at your own pace. There's a ton to explore it, real projects to create. And you can get support from people who actually also do what you're doing. Like recently I've been just trying to get my life together as is like with this whole channel. So I've enjoyed Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last by Thomas Frank. And I wanna dive more into my passions, which is like this apparently and give Vibby a reason to be back on. So I've been watching writing character driven short stories by, oh my God, I hope I pronounced this right, Yagoon Lee. And what's best is that Skillshare is also affordable, especially when you compare it to the pricey in-person classes and workshops. You know, I say that because the annual subscription is just less than $10 a month. So go on and click the link in the description to get two free months off a premium membership and explore your creativity with Skillshare. Much love, Skillshare. Oh, what's up, y'all? Ah, your boy is back with his first video of 2020. I almost said 2019. That's how off I am. Yo, if you like that video, I would highly, highly suggest checking out my last one, obviously because I made that with the, the intention of making this one. So watch that. Please, I need money. But I'm, I'm really excited to get things started and I, and I, a big shout out to my patrons coming into 2020, y'all are my fun life, blood. I need y'all. <laughs> and I, I'm really hype about this year. There's a lot of big things, a lot of big changes I'm doing this year. And I think this is the time. So uh, we're, we're doing this, this is our year. This is our year together. But really, I don't have much else to say other than that little hype session I did right there. So um, much love. To everybody, uh, I guess I guess I'm moving to bi weeklies now for like mental health reasons. I've been having a rough time, and I can't wait to make a video about it. That's the one positive of having mental health issues is like you get to like. 
talk about it for money. So it, it all that suffering was worth it. <laughs> but seriously, um, much love everybody. Um, check out check check me out on Patreon and check out the Discord. I'm hanging out in there and stuff. Uh, much love, guys. See y'all next time. It'll be interesting. We'll see. Adios.